Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aloe vera is one of the most popular herbal products, and its use is growing rapidly. Thanks to its anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and antifungal properties. The use of herbal products has been increasing in recent years thanks to a growing interest in natural and holistic health approaches. South Africa stands as a prominent player in the global aloe vera market, accounting for approximately 5% of the world's aloe vera production. Its warm, sunny climate and well-drained soils provide optimal conditions for aloe vera cultivation. South Africa possesses ample agricultural land suitable for large-scale aloe vera production. We have 38 hectares planted on the planted with aloe vera in ACAP. We have about 18 that are at the land planting and harvesting on a daily basis. What do you do first thing in the morning? Our workers, they harvest. At the moment, we are harvesting about six, six tons of aloe vera a day. The aloe vera harvesting season in South Africa typically extends from March to November, with peak harvesting occurring during the summer months between March and May. During this time, the leaves are at their peak maturity and contain the highest concentration of beneficial compounds. Farmers pick the mature leaves, which are usually thicker and have a slightly duller green color compared to the inner, younger leaves. Aloe vera, what it takes 18 to 24 months for aloe vera to be fully matured. So we, we plant it and we wait for 24 months before we can harvest it. Aloe vera is commonly propagated using offsets, small shoots that develop at the base of mature plants. During periods of prolonged drought, supplemental watering may be necessary to maintain plant health and optimal gel production. Uh, the only thing that we need to do is to, to take care of is to make sure that there are not uh, pups around the plants. We, we remove the pup, pups around the plants so that it can grow up, it can grow fully and can get like quality leaves. And then we do manual weeding we don't use any pesticides, we don't use any chemicals in our plants. That's, that's a good thing about aloe vera. And it's very safe for, for the nature, for, for conserving nature. The leaf is carefully cut as close to its base as possible to maximize the amount of gel that can be extracted. A sharp tool minimizes damage to the aloe vera plant and prevents unnecessary tearing of the leaf tissue. The leaves are packed in boxes and grouped to be handled and transported later. Aloe vera is very selective in where, meaning where you plant it. It cannot grow in every places. If you, if a place where it cannot grow in a place where the, the rainfall is too high, and then your temperatures can go extreme to 10 degrees and 15 degrees, 
That is the reason why we chose Limpopo uh, the salt, after the salt pass back, uh, the salt pass back, where your temperature is, can get to 40 degrees Celsius. Alivera, as you know, is a very is a succulent, a succulent plant. It holds water by itself. It protects itself. If your rainfall is too high, the, the root system of the plant is very small. It's just going to flood away. The boxes with the collected leaves are transported through a tractor with enough power to handle dozens of those boxes. The aloe vera industry contributes to rural development by providing sustainable livelihoods for aloe vera growers and processors in rural communities. This leads to improved living standards, poverty reduction, and economic diversification in these areas. African Caribbean Aloe Products is a leading supplier of high quality aloe vera products, including organic aloe vera gel, aloe vera solids, and aloe vera powders. The selected aloe vera leaves undergo thorough washing under running water to remove any dirt, dust, or debris. Rinsing the leaf also helps to remove traces of aloin, a yellow-colored latex that can cause skin irritation. The leaves are then split lengthwise using a sharp knife or specialized equipment exposing the thick layer of gel within the leaf. Such leaves are carefully collected and transferred to containers or conveyor belts for processing. Each worker must use the correct protection, such as gloves and aprons, to avoid any contact with the remaining aloin. Once the leaf is split, the gel is carefully removed from the inner surface of the leaf. Manual collection involves scraping the gel using spoons or spatulas, while mechanical methods employ rollers or brushes to extract the gel gently. The gel is then collected into containers to be filtrated and stabilized. The filtration process removes leaf tissue, traces of aloin, and other foreign elements that could affect the gel's clarity, texture, and consistency. The method, which can be screen, centrifugal, or ultrafiltration, depends on the desired purity and desired viscosity of the gel. Stabilization aims to preserve the gel's consistency, prevent spoilage, 
and extend its shelf life by adjusting the pH level and adding preservatives. What is the magic behind this? And they find out there's a long chain polysaccharide called alverose acetamide, acetated manan. That is the magic thing that is making aloe vera work so wonderful in a lot of things like your health, your skin, everything. It's good for everything. It has a lot of your min it has lots of minerals, vitamins and enzymes. Such a process results in a range of aloe vera products, including cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, food and beverages, and personal care products. The global aloe vera market is dominated by the Asia-Pacific area due to the growing demand in countries such as China and India. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.